The Bible tells us the Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians says, when you received the Holy Spirit, was it because you kept the law or by the hearing of faith? And the answer is we received the Holy Spirit not by keeping the law, but by the hearing of faith. And then the next question he asks in Galatians 3 is, God who does miracles, and the word there is a present tense, God who performs and keeps on performing miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The answer is hearing of faith. And none of us received God's blessings because we kept the law. None of us were saved because we, we were obedient in a perfect way, all right? We, 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 we did not do anything. It's not our works. It's the hearing of faith, by grace through faith. And God's delivery system by which God delivers to you healing, salvation, all right, peace, well-being in every area of your life is by means of preaching. The way the Bible says it like this, by the foolishness of preaching, it has pleased God. Think about it. God is pleased by this method. God ordained this method that by preaching, He will save, He will heal, He will deliver. Yep. Amen. Amen. It's in the Bible. It has pleased God. Praise God. That's why I love my job. You know, um, when I woke up this morning, I just had a feeling like I love my job. <laughs> Amen. It is by the foolishness of preaching God delivers heaven's goods. Yeah. Whether it's healing for your physical body, peace for your mind, all right, financial well-being, God delivers it all by the foolishness of preaching. These people, they hear the word, and I don't have to be there physically. It's by the hearing of faith, miracles happen in their lives. So uh, thank God for motivational speakers and all that. They help better people's lives, but preaching is not motivational speaking. Amen? In motivational speaking, they tell you you have to apply what they teach you or else it's your fault. You know what I'm saying? All right? But foolishness of preaching is that while the word is going forth, God sozos you. God heals you. God delivers you. Good things are happening even back home, all right, and you're not there physically. Good things are happening in your, in your career, in your workplace, uh, uh, wherever your, your, your fields of work may be. Good things are happening while you're hearing the word. Amen. God's delivery system is hearing the word, amen? amen. By the fool, as please God, by the foolishness of preaching. I remind you, not by the foolishness of preachers. Okay? By the foolishness of preaching. Amen. amen. So, are you ready for some more preaching? Are you ready for God's delivery system to deliver you His blessings and His goods? Amen? Remember this God system. And it's wonderful we come and praise and worship God. All that is fine. But it is when, when, the, when, when someone is preaching the word, the gospel, that God delivers and God heals and God saves. Praise God. I want to continue from where I left off last Sunday. And we touch on uh, where sin increase, grace superabounds. Amen? I want to touch specifically on the cities of refuge because there's a lot more to say about it than what I shared last week, all right? But uh, this week, I want to spend more time camping on this truth because the, it, it, is, it is chock full of revelations. Are you ready? Yes. Joshua 20, verse 1 to 8. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua. Remember, this cities of refuge is not man's idea, all right? It is God's idea. Although this is the Old Testament, there, there are literally six cities of refuge for someone who commits manslaughter. They can flee to these cities of refuge. But today, the cities of refuge is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All these are types. Say types. They are shadows. Say shadows. When you see my shadow, you can see my shadow right now. The light is shining down. My shadow is not me. All right? It looks fatter. I'm not that fat. Amen. My head looks big, but it's not that big. Amen. Lawrence, you should stand down here. You'll be very encouraged to see your head. All right? <laughs> we like to tease each other, okay? But the thing is this, church. Your shadow means you are near. All this uh, in the Old Testament, all right, is not literal today, but they contain truths. They are shadows, all right, of the substance. So the cities of refuge is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, but nonetheless, let's go back to the Old Testament, all right, and, 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 and see Christ in these shadows. Are you ready? The Lord spoke to Joshua, it's God's idea, saying, speak to the children of Israel, saying, appoint for yourselves cities of refuge, of which I spoke to you through Moses, that the slayer who kills a person accidentally or unintentionally, remember this, I shared last week that this is for people who commit manslaughter, not guilty of murder, but manslaughter, manslaughter not culpable homicide. All right? It's an accident. 
For example, the Bible gives us an example in Deuteronomy 19. There are a few places talking about the cities of refuge. One is Deuteronomy 19. In Deuteronomy 19, it tells us that, for example, if someone is cutting wood and his axe head is loose, as he swings, the axe head flies and kills someone. All right? He didn't have premeditated murder in his heart. There was no prior hatred. All right? So this is manslaughter. Now, what happened is that at the cross, Jesus put all our sins, and even the national Israel, their crime against their elder brother, their Messiah, he put it all under the category of unintentional. When he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I mean, they knew they, they betrayed him. They knew they delivered him to the Romans. The Romans knew they crucified the Son of God. They knew they were holding the nails. I mean, what is it that they don't know? But even then, he put it all in the category of unintentional. Isn't God merciful? Isn't God good? So that they qualify for the refuge that is found in him.